because when I went here, he bowled wide. But because of my height, I could reach out and flat bat it onto the side screen for six. My daughter always fights with me. She's so obsessed with tennis, she can't handle her favorites losing. When I tell her to be fearless and embrace the uncertainty, she says, I'm being preachy. It's easier said than done, I agree. I used to feel the same when my father, my hero, used to say to me, be fearless, Ravi. Are, what do you mean, be fearless? It's not a switch. I can't turn on and off, right? But when you're thrown in at the deep end and forced to evolve, you start to realize how easy it can be if you just surrender to the moment. I'll tell you where I'm coming from. Now, I've been fortunate to have both created, witnessed history in Indian cricket as a player, a commentator, and as a coach. I've hit six sixes in an over. I've broadcasted while six sixes were being hit in an over. And I've coached the team through matches when we didn't hit a single six in any over. And yet I can never say I was prepared for what was coming next. Just because I'd played before, I couldn't plan to master coaching. I couldn't create an edge over others in broadcasting. I remember the India-England game, 2007 World Cup. You know, there's uh, an exchange of words. It's obviously rattled and needled Yuvraj. And the steam and the stage was set for something special to happen. And it started. The first ball went for six. The second one went for six. The third one went for six and David Lloyd jumped out of his seat and took off. What happened after that was sheer mayhem. I go into my state of mind, having hit six sixes myself, as to trying to anticipate what must be in the mind of the bowler and the batsman. And when the fifth six was hit, again David taking off with me, of course, and I knew, and I've said it on commentary, I think Yuvraj is favorite to hit a six here. And the next one goes massive for six. And that's when you take off. No one knew what was going to happen, but it takes fierce concentration. My six sixes were different, simply because, for starters, there was no television. Much like Kapil Dev's 175 in the World Cup, no television, no coverage. And that pissed me off. But six sixes was massive. I didn't realize it at that moment of time, that only one person had hit six sixes till that time, and that was Sir Garfield Sobers. And I became the second man to hit those six sixes. Now, first class cricket is different from white ball cricket. You know, the, till the fourth six was hit in that game against Baroda, you know, I wasn't even thinking six sixes. Moment the fifth one was hit, which was probably the biggest of the lot because it went into the hockey ground at the one day. And then I saw all my teammates around the uh, side screen. And I realized that there's an opportunity here to hit six sixes. And I knew very clearly that this guy's head is muddled now. I am favorite here to get it. All I have to do is guess right. So I anticipated moving a little bit down the leg side, thinking to create a space here, where if he bowls in that area, I can smash him down the ground. If he bowls here, he goes here. I guess wrong actually, because when I went here, he bowled wide. But because of my height, I could reach out and flat bat it onto the side screen for six. All hell broke loose there, six sixes in and over. I went on to get 200 in that innings, which is the fastest double hundred till today in first class cricket. But still, when I went back home, you know, the penny hadn't dropped. It was only the next day, maybe three years, four years, five years down the line, did I realize that that six sixes is something special. And uh, you realize 30 years after that, still no one had broken it. You know, till Yuvraj came and got it in the T20 uh, tournament, then Herschel Gibbs got it in a, in a World Cup game in the following year. But it was a rare, rare record. It's a 100% record. So it can't be broken, it can only be equal. When you're playing, it's the bat and ball. When you're broadcasting, it's the mic. As a coach, you have nothing. Once the players are out on the field, you have nothing. As you can just twiddle your thumbs in the dressing room. As a coach, you must remember, your public property, you're accountable, and the country decides. You accept defeat like a sportsman should. And that's one of the great things sport teaches you. It takes you on a high. One day you're on the winning side, the other day you're on the losing side. But never forget, 
you know, in sport, one team has to win, one team has to lose. But you've got to accept defeat gracefully. And that will go a long way in whatever you do in life. It's on the back of all these experiences that I now explain the same thing to my daughter that my father would say to me, be fearless. She has the same answer. Don't be preachy, dad. It's different with tennis. I laugh and try to tell her, it's the same. Not only for every sport, but for all walks of life. As a player, coach, commentator, entrepreneur, student, stock trader, artist, actor, anything you may be pursuing, if you're listening, focusing, and reacting, then you're doing everything you can and need to. And if things don't go your way, you just move on to the next moment and go again. But she still can't accept it. So then I give up and tease her that a hero lost because the opponent was better. And then we don't talk for two days. <laughs> Nothing changes, I love it. But it's okay. I know that if she keeps watching with this passion, one day she'll understand it herself. And until then, I'm always around, trying to set that example every day with everything I do. Rebelling in the blankness, embracing the uncertainty. That's the only way I know to play the long game.